Hi everybody and welcome to the first part of our quick tips video series for Scratch. In this first part we will be looking at project default settings and main output modes. So let's start with the project settings which has a default media settings section. And what you type in here are exactly what they are labeled with, defaults. So if I know that I will be working mainly in 1080 with 23 frames per second, I will set it to this preset and now every time I create a new construct it will have those settings here 1080 and 23 frames per second. If I change the project default to let's say Ultra HD, now go back into the project, you will notice that the existing constructs and outputs do not change. They have their settings and will keep them until I change them manually. But if I now create a new construct, it will have the new project default settings. I can change this for each construct at any time, even if there's footage loaded in. So let me quickly load a couple of clips. These are red files. And as you can see, those have resolution of Ultra HD. And if I go into the player, I can see that my images perfectly fit to the timeline's dimensions. And this is also a fact that I'd like to stress. The main output node basically represents your construct or your timeline. And so the settings of the main output node are the settings of your construct or timeline. For example, when I set this main output node to, let's say, HD 25 frames per second and go into player, we can see that my timeline now is sized to HD, but the source footage is much bigger. Now, when I want to change back the dimensions and the frame rate, according to my source footage, I could do that manually by selecting the Ultra HD preset and setting the frame rate to 23 frames per second and everything, but there's an easier way to do that. We go back to the construct and have a look at the clips metadata, which is Ultra HD and a frame rate of 23 frames per second, an aspect of 1.0. So if I grab one of those clips, go to outputs and simply drop the clip onto the output node, what will happen is that the output node will adapt the settings from the clip. So it will get the clip's dimensions, the clip's aspect and the clip's frame rate. Look closely. There we go. This is an easy way of simply making your timeline settings the same as your source footage. Alright, so there's one other setting of the main output node that I'd like to talk about. And that is the render format, which is currently set to DPX 10 bit. If we would render this output node by adding it to the queue or processing it directly, Scratch would render a DPX image sequence to the designated render folder. But at the same time, this setting determines your intermediate render format. Let me show you what that means. If we enter the player with an individual clip, you can see we can play it back in real time. Now let's add some heavy grading to the shot with a couple of layers, a couple of keys and blurs and what have we. And if I now try to play this clip back, you can see it's not really playing real time. What I can do on my MacBook Pro here is hit F12 on my keyboard and this will tell Scratch to simply render the main output node for this particular clip. If we switch to the Finder, we can see that Scratch adds DPX files to our render folder. And once everything is processed, you can see that the background of our play controls is now somewhat brownish. And this indicates that Scratch is now playing back from the rendered DPX files and not from the source file, which is a red raw clip anymore. So if we now go back to our outputs, you can see this output node appears to be rendered. So now we can delete the rendered files, check in the finder, the folder now is empty. 
and let's switch this to OpenXR 16-bit float as an example. Now again, hit F12 on our keyboard and Scratch will start rendering again. If we switch to Finder we can see that now Scratch is rendering XR frames. Alright, so let's quickly abort this render right in the middle. And now you can see the play controls are still uh, with a grey background, which means that we are still looking at the red raw clip with our grading on it, because back here there are no frames rendered yet. And here in the first half these are the rendered XR frames, so then again the background will turn brownish. If we change the grading in any way, let's say um, I want to I want to brighten the clip up a little bit. You can see the brown background vanishes, and now the rendered EXR files will be disregarded for playback. And Scratch will use the red raw clip that's underneath again for playback and putting on the grade until we hit F12 again and re-render the whole shot. If you've rendered a complete timeline and just modified, let's say, two or three shots out of it, and then hit F12 again, Scratch will of course only re-render the shots that have been modified and not the complete timeline again. Alright, this is all for part one of our video series. See you next time in part two.